Oh, hello, YouTube. Today on The Naughty Librarian, I am going over my March TBR list. It's a spoiler alert. Uh, February was a bit of a shit show when it comes to reading. I just was not in the mood to read and I'm way behind. <laughs> so some of these books were on last month's TBR and they have moved on to March. And uh, I'm not even done reading the books I'm reading for February yet. So <laughs> this will be another filmed in two parts video. But I have my March TBR ready to go. So let's talk about what I have on deck currently as of right now for March. As always, we start off with book clubs and special projects and I have three of them. We're getting very near the end of our James Bond read along and I have On Her Majesty's Secret Service by Ian Fleming. This is book 11 out of 14. And one of those left is only short stories. So really there's like two more books after this one. I don't really have like a ton of memories about the first time I read this. <laughs> so it's almost like going in fresh. So I am pretty excited for this one. A recap will be coming out sometime in March. I'm also going to continue on the Mummy series from Anne Rice. So I have The Passion of Cleopatra. This one was actually co-written by her son Christopher Rice. So it's my first time reading them uh, doing a team up. <laughs> I know they've done it on several books. But it was my first time reading it for me. So uh, I'm pretty excited. The Mummy, there's already a whole recap video up. It was kind of fun reading something from Anne Rice that hasn't already been adapted into other media. So it was a fresh story 100%. A lot happened in The Mummy because I think The Mummy was originally supposed to be a standalone and then like a lot like decades later <laughs> she put out a couple more books in this series. So um, yes, The Passion of Cleopatra. Uh, there was a lot going on with her in book in book one. So uh, we'll see <laughs> how this one goes, but there will be a recap in March as well. And last but not least, the winner of our patron and channel member book club for March is Boom, Carrie by Stephen King. I want to read more Stephen King because every time I read one, I tend to really enjoy them. Like I just read The Shining in January and it was a masterpiece. So I want to read more Stephen King. Carrie was actually his first book. So I'm like, oh, let's see what the debut was like. And uh, it won the poll. So we're reading Carrie by Stephen King. <laughs> I mean, I think we all kind of know the story already. It's been in the cultural zeitgeist for like a while at this point. But um, yeah, you know, uh, pyrokinesis and bullying, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really excited to read this and like dive deeper into it. Next category is romance and I've got two of them. Back on the TBR list is Taste Like Shakar by Nisha Sharma. I don't know why I have such a block about this book. I've been meaning to read this for like several months and like I just never get to it. And, it, and I, it's my fault. I don't know why I just have a block here. But you know what? I have conquered blocks before, <laughs> so hopefully March will be the time to do it, especially because it's like green and like March, St. Patrick's Day. So, I mean, even though this has nothing to do with Irish culture at all, but <laughs> I'm like, well, maybe because it's green, I'll read it. I don't know. I'm grasping at straws here, but I'm um, hoping for the best. I'll finally end up reading it this month. It's Enemies to Lovers, uh, Desi Representation really excited for this one. I am, even though I haven't read it in months. Another green covered romance for March. I have Fangirl Down by Tessa Bailey. I love a good Tessa Bailey romp. Um, they're going to be funny and smutty and just delightful. Like they are sit on the couch with some drinks and just have me time books. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's going to be funny and smutty. I don't know what else to tell you. This one in particular, it's kind of um, this girl who is obsessed with this golf player. Um, and it's kind of like a grump sunshine situation. And uh, I'm, I don't know. I, it's just, I saw Tessa Bailey was putting it out. So I got it. I pre-ordered it. <laughs> it came in the mail. She's like an auto buy author for me because I'm always going to enjoy them. They're smutty, fun romps. Last category is fantasy. And I've got two. I am so excited to read The Bad Ones by Melissa Albert. Oh, I love Melissa Albert. I think she might be a, kind of an acquired taste author, uh, that if you love her writing, you really love it. And if you don't get it, then you're just gonna really hate it. <laughs> I think this is like YA, but more new adult level YA. And uh, she does a lot of good things with like feminine rage. So if you want to read feminine rage done well, 
these are your books. And this one in particular, it's um, kind of two girls who were childhood best friends, they grew up, and then one of them disappears. And the other friend is trying to figure out what happened. And the missing friend left all these weird clues behind. And uh, it may or may not have something to do with a maybe not altogether fictional goddess they were playing with as children, like games with this goddess. I don't know. I feel like it's going to get witchcrafty and I'm like into it. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of like toxic friendships and also a, uh, you know, psychological thriller and also maybe a paranormal thriller. Maybe. I don't know. We're going to find out together this month when I read it. And back on my TBR from February, I have House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J. Maz. And um, this is a <laughs> this is a hell of a book. I just dropped it and the level of thud it made alarmed me. <laughs> but um, it is so thick. Like this is a thick with two C's. Good gravy. How long is it? Okay, so it's 835 pages. And I think it's actually the finale of these series, I believe. Um, I was thinking there was gonna be more in it, but I heard through the grapevine, a aka my live streams, <laughs> that uh, allegedly this is the end of that series. So um, it makes sense why it's so chonky. Like maybe it was supposed to be four books and it got like combined into one. But um, I'm excited to see how this shakes out. Like the Maz verse is very complex. It's been a hot minute since I read the last book. Part of me wants to go in blind here and just be like, what do I remember? Let's find out together. However, the responsible part of me is like, mm, you should probably look up a spoiler review to figure out what's happening. But you know what? I'm gonna figure that out when I get there, okay? I'm gonna probably wing it and see what happens. <laughs> but um, I do want to see what happens and it's so long. It's like, it's it's alarming how long it is. So that's everything I have on deck for March. Uh, I didn't make a very big DBR since I've been having a hard time wanting to read in general. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take it easy on myself and just put a few books in here. Ones that I have pre-ordered and finally came in the mail, so I know I'm really excited about them. And then a couple books that I'm like, okay, I can't put this off forever. <laughs> I have to do it. So um, yeah, I'm feeling really good about it. Uh, it's hopefully March will be a better reading month than February. And uh, future Amanda is gonna come film that video and then tell you how I did for February and bring all my reviews. So let's go to that now. Oh, hello, YouTube. I am back, back, back again for part two of this video. I have finally finished all the books I was going to read for February. Uh, there's not a ton of them, but I finished a few more so this wouldn't be like shameful, <laughs> essentially. But enough with all that, let's get into reviewing some books. First category is books I have already reviewed and there's two of them. I already have a full video up on The Spy Who Loved Me by Ian Fleming and, uh, you know, TLDR. The first time I read this book, who boy did I hate it. I thought it was hot garbage. And then uh, my second time through, I'm like, you know what? Don't hate it as much. I actually liked it better the second time. I think maybe because my like, uh, I don't know, my expectations were already in the gutter. <laughs> so we could only go up from here. <laughs> this book in particular is more experimental in nature, I would say. Uh, for example, it's a James Bond book, but James Bond isn't in it into the last third of the book. He is 0% even mentioned in the first two thirds of the book. We have a completely new protagonist, this woman named Viv. And here's the deal. Like, I don't think Ian Fleming is the correct author to be writing about any woman's sexual trauma. <laughs> there you go. He's not the right guy to do it. Uh, do I think he made a compelling character? Yes. And I also feel like she's written in a way that's super non-judgmental. Like, it doesn't ever come across she's being judged for having a sexual past at all. She's actually coming across as sympathetic for, you know, being used in incorrect ways. So uh, there's that. <laughs> but, like, this is also kind of a bucket of yikes in the same vein. Because uh, Ian Fleming doesn't understand women half as well as he thinks he does. And yikes. <laughs> so definitely some problematic thought patterns in this book. 
and uh yeah i don't know it's, it's still not his best book but i did like it better than the first time i read it so there's that i also read the mummy or ramsey's the damned by anne rice so this is my first anne rice book that hasn't already been adapted into other media so i was really excited to go into something with no preconceived notions like there's there's no movie or video components it's all brand new there's already a full recap video on this out but the tldr version is i very much liked it surprisingly it has all of that uh anne rice uh vibe you know like gothic broody romance uh paranormal elements uh, all of that that I love in Anne Rice. And it was distinctly missing the big thing I don't like about Anne Rice's works, which is how she uses children in her literature, because uh, they get put into a lot of sexualized situations in there, and that is a big old bucket of yikes. And this one, not a single kid in the book. <laughs> so I was like, yes, <laughs> yes. Perfect. And as you can guess from the title, it's about the mummy or Ramses. This is about Ramses II, except he's not actually like a mummy so much as he's an immortal being that like gets powered up by the sun. So he's kind of like a reverse vampire and he had been out of the sun for a long time, hence he's all mummied. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's like his adventures in uh, 1914 England and Cairo. So it's, it's interesting seeing it's a period drama. Um, there's a lot of characters in here. Not all of them are as developed as they could be, frankly, but uh, overall I did really like it. Uh, it. And it is shorter than most of her books. It's only like a little bit over 400 pages, but oh boy, does she jam pack this full of like all kinds of stuff. So a lot happens in it, mainly because it was meant to be a standalone. She did put out two more books in this series, but like decades later. So yeah, it's been a hot minute since like the first book and the second book. So I'm interested to see where that goes and I will be covering those other two books as well. But this one, I kind of really liked it. I thought it was fun. I think it's perfect for you if you like The Mummy 1999. It's not exactly the same vibes because The Mummy 1999, it's very, you know, whimsical and zany and it's funny. This one is more broody gothic romance, but similar elements. So I think if you like one, you might like the other. Next category is historical romance and I read three of them. You know what? It's painful for me to say this, but I DNF'd An Earl to Remember by Stacey Reed. Ah, it hurts because I, I love Stacey Reed. She has written some really great books. I, I have so many of her books on my shelf. I've read a lot of them. I, I really love some of them. And this one, I was like, all right, let's go. And I came in a little bit reserved because this is an amnesia trope, which is, again, problematic because <laughs> consent issues. But I was going to give it the benefit of the doubt. And I read about 100 pages of this. And I absolutely loathe the male romantic lead in this. He sucks so bad. Frankly, he comes off like, you know, one of those guys who has a podcast. <laughs> you know, the ones where you're like, oh my gosh, someone take the microphone away from him. Dear Lord. That's what he's like, and it's, it's given me the ick hardcore. So this is Daniel, right? And he's an Earl, and he is such an asshole when we first meet him in the book. He's gross, ew, he probably has pox. Like, let's be real, he has pox. He sleeps with anything that'll move. He's got the, he's got pox. In this era, he has it. And so I'm already grossed out by him. <laughs> he's an asshole, he's the worst. He gets amnesia. And then we have Georgiana, our female romantic lead. Mind you, she came into this hating this guy. Now he has amnesia. And she's like, uh, the, you're my husband. So now, you know, she has to fake this marriage with him. And here's the thing with like uh, amnesia stories. Oftentimes you meet the character, they're a jerk. They have amnesia. So, you know, they don't remember all of their traumas that made them an asshole. And now they're really nice when they don't have their memories. But uh, in this case, Nope, not at all. Daniel is equally as big of an asshole without his memories. Like, asshole is the baseline of his personality. <laughs> He's just the worst. I don't want them together. Why do you like him? He says the meanest shit to you, Georgiana. Like, I feel like I need to have an intervention, okay? I couldn't read any further. It hurts me to say it, but like, yikes. I was just not, the vibes were not vibing. I was not into this. So to cleanse my palate of the, that debacle, 
I came in with some good ones from Dame Beverly Jenkins. I don't think she's actually a dame, but like I'm starting the campaign for it because Beverly Jenkins is so cool. She deserves to be a dame. So this is books one and two of this Destiny series. I've already read book three. I don't know why I never read the first two, but uh, here we are. And it's like 1885, uh, Sacramento, so Northern California area. And we're following these three brothers, uh, oldest brother, middle brother, the last one is the youngest brother, which I'd already read. And uh, overall, I did really like both of these. If I had to pick between them, I would say probably Destiny's Surrender, I liked better than Destiny's Embrace. And I think that's because Destiny's Embrace gets a little bogged down by the types of things I don't always love in Beverly Jenkins writing. Like sometimes she gets a little bit too into the weeds with the slice of life kind of scenes in the book. Like they spend a lot of time picking out cabinets in this. <laughs> like I don't need to know what cabinets you have. You know what I mean? They have this big juicy like subplot in here that could have really been like stretched and like brought forward and had it been like, ooh, here's the drama. Something crazy is gonna happen. But uh, no, it, I mean, it does, but it's so brief that I was like, well, that's kind of wasted, <laughs> you know? So this one I think did have some like false issues maybe, but it didn't change the fact that I did enjoy the book. I liked the characters. I wanted them to be together. It's definitely an enemies to lovers type of romance. Uh, this is, who this? Logan and Mariah. Mariah, she's a spitfire. I love her. Logan, he needs someone to put him in his place. Perfect combo. So I really rooted for them to be together. I did like it. Lots of historical information in here. So if you're a history nerd, you're probably gonna really love these books. And then let's move over here to Destiny's Surrender. So this is book two. Now we're following Andrew and Billy. And I think this one was just bringing me the drama that I needed and I wanted. So Billy is actually a sex worker and they never shy away from that in the book. She's not particularly ashamed of that. She's just like, yeah, I'm a sex worker. Well, she doesn't use the word sex worker. This is 1885, they didn't have the word yet. But I really liked that they gave her agency and she wasn't like, oh, woe is me, I've been pushed into this. She's like, no, I needed to do it to survive and I was good at it. So I really liked her kind of attitude about her sexual past where she's like, this is what I did. I'm not, I'm married to Andrew, I'm not doing it anymore, kind of a thing. So I, I appreciated that. As for tropes, this is kind of a whoopsie baby because she does show up and say, hey, guess what? This is your son, he's a year old. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't always like whoopsie baby, but this one I thought was fun just maybe because I really liked Billy as a character. And ooh, they had drama in this one. You know, there's a bad guy who's trying to like get them. So there's action, there's adventure, there's kidnapping and stuff. So I'm like, ooh, this one was giving me the juice that I needed. So if I had to pick between them, I like this one better, but they're both great for historical value and also romantic value. Last category is creepy eerie. I'm gonna call it and I have two of them. My patron and channel member book club pick for February was Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver and I ended up really liking this in the end. I, I definitely, I pre-ordered book two so yeah I like it. I liked it enough I pre-ordered something but this one in particular it might be for an acquired taste audience. Uh, try trigger warnings if you need them because uh, TLDR this is a serial killer romance, and I don't mean that in a bad way, if that is at all possible. Our main love interests here are Rowan and Sloan, and both of them are serial killers, except um, they don't like kill innocent people, they kill other serial killers who are, who are really bad people. So you kind of root for them because like, uh, fuck those guys, you know? Like that guy over there is a literal cannibal. Like I'm okay with you killing him. So it's like, maybe you question your own morals in this book a bit, but um, just knowing that they're both serial killers, this is um, incredibly graphically violent at times. However, I will say the gruesome details in this feel a bit more campy than they do uh, horrific because usually there's jokes involved. It's kind of gallows humor, essentially. So if you like gallows humor and steamy romances, 
this is it for you. <laughs> so I know I've mentioned a lot about the gruesome details, but at its core, it's actually kind of a really sweet romance, which is weird to say about two serial killers. But they, you know, they obviously both have a lot of past trauma they have to overcome. And like, I really rooted for them to get with each other. It's definitely like kind of a slow burn romance here. But like, you know, they're two, if they, if they weren't serial killers, yeah, they'd be really, really sweet. <laughs> So I, I guess this is just, um, I don't even know. I, I guess it's a strangely sweet serial killer romance. <laughs> it's hard to explain, but if that seems like your vibe, you'll probably dig it. And last up, I read 50 Beasts to Break Your Heart by Jenna Rose Nethercott. Now, Jenna Rose Nethercott is an auto by author for me. However, this is only their second book, but uh, I liked it enough that I'm like, oops, cemented anything Jenna Rose Nethercott puts out, I am going to buy. Uh, her debut novel, Thistlefoot, is one of my favorites. It's so good. Uh, Trek trigger warnings again. It gets very dark at times because it is based on true historical events, so watch out. But 50 Bases to Break Your Heart is actually a collection of short stories. All of them are kind of creepy, eerie, folklore type stories. And they're not always like straightforward. Sometimes they're uh, purposefully opaque. Uh, you have to kind of pick out the details to figure out what's going on. It's not clear always. It's more like vibes of eeriness and you have to figure out what the story is. So if you like things like that, you're going to love this. But um, for me, I don't always like that. But in this case, I liked it because the vibes were vibing. And like any collection of short stories, some stories in here are better than others. But there's also a lot of cool artwork in it. Like there's all of the little beasts have like their own little artwork pictures and stuff. So really, really liked it. A couple of these short stories in here I'm obsessed with. I want them to be full length novels. So <laughs> overall, really liked it. Some are better than others as in any short story collection, but Jenna Rose is like an auto buy for me. So if, if you're like me, you probably would like this as well. <sighs> all right, so that does it for February. It was kind of a shit show of a reading month. I just didn't want to read for so long. I just couldn't make myself do it. I only got so many books in because like I was literally pounding them back at the end of the month, like one a day. <laughs> like, that's the only way I like read enough. Otherwise it would have been like three books and they were all things I had to read, nothing for fun. So I, it turned out okay in the end, but I just was not in a reading mood in February. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Um, give me a recommendation for another uh, book of short stories. What's one of your favorites? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. If you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And if you want cool exclusive content, including early access to videos and a book club, you can consider becoming a channel member or a patron. Links for that are in the description down below. And on that note, I will see you guys soon. Goodbye.